The Egyptian radio spoke so much about the ascension on Wednesday night that I celebrated it on both Wednesday night and on Thursday night. Secondly, evidently one of the commanders of the Afyon gendarme was angry at Isharat al Ijaz being seized from us, seeing that it is a scholarly work that was written years ago. The Afyon public prosecutor's office decided that it should be returned to us. They summoned us on Friday and Hayri on the day of the ascension and returned it. I considered this to be a sign of the ascension that, as with the return in Tarsus, the spread of the Risale Nur cannot be prevented. God willing, we shall get back our Quran and other treatises from Afyon. Concerning the copies of a guide for Yov, which were given to the public prosecutor's office in Istanbul, foremost the lawyer Mehmet Mihri, who was a leading student of the old Said, and his son-in-law, the defending lawyer Asim, said that they were going to take this matter to court with 50 other lawyers, but, God willing, there will be no need for that, and he will get them back with going to court. Thirdly, the peace cult complained to the Supreme Tribunal at the resurrection of the dead, and the peace consisting of 10 matters that addressed the parliament 28 years ago, and was printed at that time, and also the piece consisting of three matters about Mustafa that was written four years ago for the President of the Republic, have all been sent to Ankara to show to some of the present deputies and to the believing members of the government. I am also sending them to you for your information. Fourthly, Mehmet Çavuş and his brother from the village of Baraklı near Dinar came to visit me together with another man. They appeared to me to be quite serious. Subsequently, they wrote some things in a letter and I am sending you a part of it attached. The brother asks some questions, but the Risaleinur leaves no need for this. It supplies answers to everything in my place. Only, in his question about the verse, immortal youths will attend on them in the letter of condolence on the death of a child, it says in some old commentaries that in paradise everyone from children to the elderly will be 33 years of age. God knows best, but the meaning is this, that the term yovs in the unambiguous verse means that children, for whom it is not compulsory to perform the religious obligations, and they are absolved from them, and who die before the age of puberty, will remain as lovable children worthy of paradise. Nevertheless, according to the Sharia, parents should encourage their child to perform the prayers when they reach the age of seven in order to familiarize them, and they should strongly encourage him when he reaches ten to accustom him. That is to say, although it is not compulsory, as a sort of spiritual worship, Children who perform the prayers from the age of seven till the age of puberty like adults and hold the fast will be 33 years old in paradise in order to receive the large rewards of pious adults. Some commentaries included all children without elucidating this point. It was supposed to be general, although it is specific. My dear, loyal, Thoughtful brothers, firstly, owing to many signs, I have formed the certain opinion that the reason court atheists have deceived a number of officials and insistently leveled their accusations as a guide for youth alone out of all the lengthy confidential treatises of their Sarinur and have caused me difficulties this last one and a half years is the piece about the air human ptesi in the guide. For the true meaning of divine unity that the peace discloses most clearly and decisively smashes absolute disbelief. In fact, in one part of it, it disallows every sort of doubt and hesitation. Because court atheists could find nothing to combat this, they tried to prevent its spread by banning it officially. I am going to explain to you only three of many points related to the peace about the air 
that I expounded for the leading students of the Madrasa to Zehra the day before yesterday. First point. According to an inner meaning of the verse, to him ascend all good words, one elevated and important duty of the element's ear is to be an ever-changing page for the pen of divine power in order to make heard to all the angels and spread wings in the globe of the air the beautiful, meaningful, various words of belief inscribed by the pen of divine determining and spread through divine permission and to convey them to the sovereign throne. Since this is the most important of the air's sacred duties and of the wisdom in its creation, and since by means of the radio the face of the earth is made into a single dwelling and is a vast divine bond for humankind, most certainly, as humankind's universal thanks, before anything else the words that the radio broadcasts should be foremost the Quran and its truths, which are divine speech and good words and the lessons of belief and fine morals and the essential needs and benefits of mankind. Then, it may be thanks for that vast bounty. For if thanks are not offered for bounties, they become harmful for people. It is true that human beings have need for some enjoyable entertainments, as they have need for true effects and reality, but amusements should be only one in five. It is otherwise contrary to the air's purpose. Moreover, while being a vast bounty for humankind, it is the cause of laziness and vice and the neglect of necessary duties, thus becoming a serious calamity. For it destroys people's enthusiasm for work and effort which they need. Now, before my very eyes is the tiny machine of a radio which was brought to my room so that I might listen to the Quran. I listened to it and saw that only a tenth of it was allotted to good words. I understood this to be a human error. God willing, they will correct it. And a thanks for this bounty of the radio, which should be a means of transforming the whole face of the earth into an enlightened council, an elevated dwelling, and a school teaching religious belief, four-fifths of what it broadcasts will be good words, which will be spoken to win everlasting life for humankind. Second point. It says in the Risale Nur that one who cannot create the universe cannot create an atom. Only the being who creates the whole universe can create an atom in its right place and make it perform its earthly duties. One particular proof of this sentence's universal proof is this. The handful of air in this small radio I have with me, which is the container and receptacle of words, demonstrates decisively the following. A single phrase of the Quran, for instance, all praise be to God, with all its letters and in the mode and style particular to the reciter, reaches our ears with no change through the handful of air in the radio, or distances varying from one hour to a year from one of the nearly 200 radio stations whose names appear written in this mission. In order for the phrase to reach our ears and in order to convey it to them without its being altered or distorted, there have to be found in every atom of that handful of air an infinite power and comprehensive will and knowledge so all embracing it knows all the different modes of the Quran reciters in those centers all over the earth. For if there were no all seeing eye to see them, an ear to hear everything everywhere at the same moment, most certainly that miracle of power would not come into existence. That is to say, this handful of air molecules can manifest such a miracle of power only through a knowledge and will that encompass the whole universe, and the power of a being possessing hearing and sight, and an absolutely powerful one for whom nothing is difficult, and for whom the greatest thing is as easy as the smallest. For to ascribe the existence of air waves to the creation of imaginary, haphazard chance, blind force, and deep nature, means making every single molecule an absolute ruler that sees, knows, and does everything in the globe of the atmosphere covering the whole earth. 
This is a totally impossible superstition which is infinitely distant from reason. Third point. The following fact is understood from the miracle of power that the handful of air displays in the tiny machine of this radio, a receptacle which acts as a flower pot for the blooms of words. Every one of the air's molecules describes Almighty God together with his being and attributes and every one of them proves them. With their extensive, lengthy proofs, the philosophers and religious scholars who investigate the universe take the whole of it into consideration when proving the existence and unity of the necessarily extinct one. Only then do they attain fully to knowledge of God. However, just as a fragment of glass displays the sun when it appears, the same as the surface of the ocean displays it, and it points to the sun, so too, in consequence of the above mentioned truth, all the particles in that handful of air display in themselves the manifestation of divine unity and of the divine attributes and perfection the same as the ocean of the universe. Thus, since there is Salinur, which is a flesh of the miraculous meanings of the all-wise Quran, has elucidated this fact, an attentive Nurju is not compelled to say, there is no extent save God, in order to attain a constant sense of the Divine Presence and be perpetually aware of knowledge of God. And the Nurju does not need to say, there is none witnessed save Him, in order to attain a constant sense of the Divine Presence like some of the people of reality. For the sacred window of the shining truth of in everything is a sign indicating that he is one, is sufficient for him. A brief explanation of this Arabic phrase is as follows. Everyone in this world has their own world, their own universe. Quite simply, there are universes and worlds one within the other to the number of conscious beings. The pillar of each person's personal world, universe, and world is his own life. If he has a mirror in his hand and holds it up to a large palace, he will have a palace in his own mirror. Similarly, each person has his own personal world. Saying, there is no existence save he, some of the people of reality denied this personal world, and in accordance with the inner meaning of abandoning everything other than God, found a permanent sense of the divine presence and knowledge of God. Another group of the people of reality said, There is nothing observed save him. In order to find permanent cognizance of God and an awareness of the divine persons and consigned their personal worlds to oblivion, they drew a veil of transcendence over them and finding a sense of the divine presence, transformed all their lives into worship of a sort. Now, at the present time, in accordance with the inner meaning of and in everything is a sign indicating that he is one, which has become apparent through the miraculousness of the Quran's meanings, there is a window revealing divine unity in everything from particles to the stars, and there are signs, that is, indications and evidences making known directly the single one of unity together with his attributes. Thus, in the piece about the air, are succinct indications to the above-mentioned sacred truth concerning belief and the Divine Presence. The risale Nur has proud and elucidated it. In former times, the people of reality explained it somewhat briefly and summarily. This means that these ghastly times are more in need of this truth, since it has been bestowed in detail through the all-wise Qur'an's miraculousness and the risale Nur has disseminated it. The Enduring One, He is the Enduring One, Your Brother, Said Nursi. I submit the following to religious, patriotic, and zealous deputies. Such parts of the risale Nur as Zulfikar, the miracles of the Quran collection, which the Hajjiz saw had been placed next to the black stone in Mecca out of respect, and the staff of Moses collection, which they say had been placed on the prophets upon whom the blessings and peace tomb in Medina, are means of securing the world of Islam's true brotherhood for us. But 
For four years, moose have been made to destroy them by confiscating them and leaving them to rot in courts, repositories as though they were pernicious wrecks. This is despite four courts having ruled for their acquittal and free publication and on numerous occasions are having applied to the authorities and sent petitions requesting their return and the Prime Minister having said that up till now no harm has come to country due to the propagating of religion. And now the religiously minded are alarmed at the law ensuring religious freedom being postponed although it should have had priority and been ratifying urgently and they are worried that in the nation's eyes the religious deputies are failing to perform their most crucial religious duties. We too are alarmed and so that internal cowards atheists and traitors who work on account of communism do not take advantage of this situation, out of patriotism I am compelled to explain the following fact to you. The fact is this. A reminder to religious democrat deputies. Due to my illness these days, I have been unable to endure the intense cold. On numerous occasions I have experienced that as a result of a general error, the air and earth grow angry and give news of divine wrath through earthquakes and storms and display conditions opposed to the ordinary. I pursued in the signs of a non-material storm. I wondered in my heart if a general mistake had again been made, causing harm to Islam and the truths of belief. I asked what there was in the newspapers and what the news was, although it is not my custom and I have given up world politics. They told me that the law ensuring the freedom of religious people who disseminate religion has been postponed, while the law concerning leftists has been expedited and ratified. It occurred to my heart that before anything else, for the benefit of this country and Islam it is essential that the law ensuring the freedom of religious people be both expedited and ratified and urgently implemented in schools. For together with winning for this country with such a ratification, the moral strength of the nearly 40 million Muslims in Russia and the 400 million world of Islam as a reserve force, it would help the moral and spiritual depredations of communism. For while due to its thousand year enmity Russia should first of all have attacked us rather than America or Britain, what obviated such an attack was doubtless the truth of the Quran and belief. In which case, before anything else, in the face of that extraordinary force, it is absolutely essential to actively grasp the truth of the Quran and to construct a Quranic barrier before irreligion, like an insuperable barrier of Zulkarnain. For it is only the truths of belief and the Quran which have prevented Russia from attacking us and halted it, although up to the present it has overrun half China and half Europe. Since the judiciary can respond to the Russians' moral destruction only by giving material penalties to one man out of a thousand, Moral and spiritual bombs are needed against that force which hands over the property of the rich to vagabonds and the poor and prophets the daughters and the wives of the honorable to licentious youths and in a short time has seized half of Europe. Those bombs are the Adam's bombs of the truth of the Quran and belief. They may halt that dreadful leftist current. Such a universal force cannot be halted with the material penalties dealt out to one man out of a hundred by the judiciary. For this reason, the religious deputies postponing this matter, which should be expedited, has led to the globe of the atmosphere objecting to it with severe cold, as we have previously experienced many times. Humanity has experienced a powerful awakening as a result of the two ghastly world wars due to which, most certainly, no nation can now exist without religion. Russia cannot remain without religion, nor will it return to Christianity. At the very most, it will be reconciled with the Quran, which smashes absolute disbelief, is based on truth and reality, and is founded on proof and evidence 
and persuades the intellect and heart, or it may follow it. Then it will not draw the sword against the 400 million adherents of the Quran. Said Nursi. My dear loyal brothers, firstly, I congratulate you on the night of the prophets upon whom the blessings and peace birth with all my life and spirit, and I give you the good news of your success and the extraordinarily effective spirit of the Sari Nur, and we congratulate the Nurjus. Secondly, the blessed night I received a severe admonishment in my heart due to which two ideas occurred to me in connection with the Istanbul University Nur students describing the wonders of the old site and new site in the biography. The first, my friends have formed an opinion of me for exceeding my due concerning some prodigies sent to it, and among opponents and philosophers an apprehension has formed, again far surpassing my due, of a truly wondrous genius, and among some of them even of powerful magical powers. An explanation of this has been sought from me in many places as to what the truth is. So, owing to the powerful warning I received this night, I have been obliged to explain a fact with many preliminaries. First preliminary. The seed of the pine, as tiny as a grain of wheat, is the source of a mighty pine tree. Divine power creates the west tree from the seed. Only one part out of a million is found in the seed, yet, in meaning it is an index written with the pen of divine determining. Otherwise, as many factories as a village would be necessary for the vast tree to be formed with all its branches and twigs. Thus, a proof of grandeur and divine power is that it creates things as huge as mountains from a particle. In just the same way, Without intending any humility or modesty, I proclaim with full conviction that the services I have performed and the course of my life have been a sort of seed. Divine Providence bestowed the Risale Nur, which proceeded from the Quran and is a lofty, fruit-bearing tree, in order to be the source of a crucial service for religious belief at this time. I swear that I never saw in myself, due to the wonders, that have happened throughout my life, an ability or virtue or anything needing extraordinary talent. I used it to be quite astonished, let alone possessing a wonderful genius or malvalious sentiment, I did not consider myself capable of organizing myself and participating in social relations. It is true that some traits like self-advertisement were apparent in my life, but that was a sort of involuntarily boasting so as not to give the lie to people's favorable opinions. Because I did not know the wisdom in my not being as the people supposed and thought that I was no use for the world, I considered that my thus being held in regard a thousand times higher than was my due was totally opposed to right and truth. But endless thanks be to Almighty God that now at the end of this life of 70 to 80 years, we have understood the wisdom in it to a degree through divine grace, and I am going to indicate a part of it briefly. I am explaining a few examples out of many. First example. The method followed in the madrasas requires at least 15 years study so that the Islamic sciences and religious truths may be fully acquired. At that time, what was observed inside it was not a wondrous intelligence or spiritual power, but a state or condition whereby, in extraordinary fashion outside all ability and talent, in three months after acquiring in two years the basics of Arabic grammar and syntax, astonishingly he as though read 40 to 50 books in three months and received his diploma. Sixty years later, the situation showed directly that a Quranic commentary would emerge that, in the short period of three or four months, could teach people and that the wretched Sayyid would be employed in its service. And it also suggested the idea and predictions that a time would come when there would be no madrasas where the sciences of belief could be learned in 15 years, 
or even in one, or else they would be reduced in number. Second example. I confess and believe certainly that Said's debating with prominent scholars in his youth long ago and his answering their questions and even to his replying correctly to their most complex questions without being asked occurred through neither my wondrous intelligence nor my outstanding abilities. I am quite certain that my answering correctly although I was a helpless, childish, confused, noisy youth who would have been defeated by ordinary hojas or young students let alone leading scholars did not result from my capabilities and intelligence. I was amazed at it for 70 years. But now, through divine grace, I have understood one reason for it, which is that a tree which would be a seed to the madrasa sciences would be bestowed, and that the person who served the tree would have numerous rivals and opponents. Thus, despite it being the custom among Muslims for the adherence of different ways, and outlooks to criticize one another and publish opposing works like the Sunnis and the Mu'tazilats and at this time the most effective and devastating opponents who would strike at that nurturee's servant should have been the Madrasa Hojas and the thanks be to Almighty God that contrary to that long-standing custom the Hojas have been unable to produce works critical of the Risale Nur. A reason for this is that as a youth Said answered the ulema's questions correctly and evidently disheartened them for nowhere have jealous hojas opposed the risale Nur, although by their profession they are strongly opposed to Said. I have thus formed the opinion that this is one instance of wisdom in that situation. For if it had been otherwise and in these strange times the people of the madrasas had started to oppose it, it would have provided our coward enemies, the supporters of irreligion, with a powerful means of refuting both the Risale Nur and the ulema. And let thanks be to Almighty God that the official ulema, whom the Risale Nur offends most, have been unable to oppose it. Third example. I am now quite certain that one instance of wisdom in Said not accepting since the childhood of the old Said and his not being able to accept alms and gifts, although both he himself and his father were poor, and his not accepting presents although he was greatly in need, and his never going to collect substance, although the custom in Kurdistan was for the students food to be donated from the people's homes together with zakat and their expenses, and his not knowingly accepting zakat even I am now certain that one reason for this was that I was made to feel disgust at that acceptable custom and harmless practice and to accept extreme poverty and needs and to avoid evading charity from people so that later in life a second task like their Salinur concerned solely with belief and hereafter should not be exploited for worldly ends or personal benefits and true sincerity the true strength of the Risale Nur should not be impaired. I also perceive a sign in this that in the future the religious scholars will suffer defeat due to need and the struggle for livelihood. Fourth example. In the face of the worldlies opposing the new site in his old age for 28 years with extreme severity, in a way completely opposed to the law, fairness, conscience and even humanity, Although he has tried to withdraw totally from politics and the world and they raining down blows on his head and insulting him vilely, although he could not endure even the bite of a fly, he has been given an unprecedented patience and forbearance. I feel quite certain that one instance of wisdom in this and also with the courage proceeding from belief in the truth, the appointed hour is fixed and does not change in his remaining patiently silent in cowardly and object fashion although he is extremely nervous and highly strung and not cowardly by nature and also in fact somewhat later after the torments relief being imparted to his spirit was the politicians being given the groundless suspicion about Said that he was exploiting religion for political ends 
so that he should not exploit the Risale Nur, which expounds the all wise Quran's truths of belief for personal benefits or spiritual ranks or for anything. I have the firm conviction that to prevent Sa'id with torments and imprisonments from making religion the tool of politics. The cruel rulings of the politicians were the compassionate slaps of divine determining saying, Beware, don't exploit the Risale Nur, a commentary explaining the truths of belief, for your personal benefits, or even for your spiritual attainments, or to be saved from calamities and harmful things, lest through sincerity the Risale Nur true strength be spoiled. In fact, Whenever I have neglected the Risale Nur service and become excessively preoccupied with my life in the hereafter and worship, the worldly have pertinaciously fallen upon me, inflicting torments on me. We refer further explanation of this fourth example to one of the letters written recently, which concerns understanding the wisdom in the politicians imprisoning Said with accusations of his exploiting religion for political ends and on his perceiving that these rulings were the compassionate slaps of divine determining, his forgiving the politicians and his enduring it. Fifth example. Everyone used to be astonished that this wretched Said's handwriting was so poor that he could not write as much as a clever child could write in ten days, although his need to do was so great and he had been busy with that occupation for seventy years and on some days was compelled to correct as many as 200 pages. And so it was not altogether lacking in ability. I am now quite certain that the reason for his being semi-literate despite his blood brothers all having fine handwriting and he was much in need of it was this. A time would come when personal, minor strengths would be unable to withstand the assaults of awesome immaterial enemies, and it would become necessary to earnestly seek people with fine handwriting to share in the work, and to serve that non-material tree like the water, air, and light serves at seed. Then a universal, general, and powerful pen would be needed in place of that personal, minor service, so as to attain true sincerity by melting icy egotism in that blessed pool and serving belief in this way. The wisdom was this, the enduring one, he is the enduring one.